you guys. We are back with behind the scenes in person, live. Well, kind of live. Well, hi, hi, it's live now. It's such a show. show. <laughs> it's such shit that we do when we get in the look at person. Yeah, literally. <laughs> literally. Oh my goodness. Well, before we get into today's episode, episode number 41, we are actually going to talk about stuff we have to deal with on show weekends when we're not competing and acting as coaches. So that's going to be our our kind of our theme for today, our topic for today. But like, comment, subscribe, all the fun things, wherever the buttons may be. <laughs> <laughs> we <laughs> never know. <laughs> we don't even know. We never know. Uh, so yeah, we're in DC right now for the DC Pro Am, which is this weekend. So um it's Thursday and then like you know all the competitors like I get it tomorrow. So we'll go into that a little bit. But first our life updates. How are you doing? Really good. How are you? I'm doing really good. Good. Had a good weight drop this week. Finally. Yes, me too. One and a half. I love it. You beat me. You, I you beat you. I got by I, one. Yeah. I, I had two and a half. Yep. Yeah. I was down more yesterday, but then I was saying, I was like, I think the reason why I went up is because I, I worked like stuff yesterday. So for those of you guys who don't know, like when you train your lower body, you tend to retain more, to retain more water. That tends to be a thing. So if the weight goes up, glutes or something like that the day before that's likely why so it's not body fat no, you, didn't, you didn't just put on a pound overnight no. <laughs> you're just inflamed yes. healthy water i mean that's why you know when you go to peak week you usually cut the like training out by like wednesday or so yeah first thing i know i, I cut it out early in the week do you cut your clients it depends it depends like for it's me i can depends. it always <laughs> i can always train super heavy going into show but but i do get inflamed but like that's the way that my glutes look the best so it's like that fine balance but for most people you should cut it by like wednesday at yeah. the latest for yeah. sure you know that, and that makes sense i mean i even said that to one of my clients recently i was like i hope i'm actually okay if your glutes are a little inflamed because they need to be a little bit more plump a little bit juicier so we're okay with that sometimes it works to your advantage especially when you're that lean it can yeah. look like more of like a fullness look but yeah you have to know the athlete yeah you have to i mean the trial and error like yeah so, my weight was up a pound this morning too because i woke up at 2 30 so it's like i had i think like maybe four hours of sleep, three and a half hours of sleep. So I was like, dang it. Yeah. But I already had in my brain going to bed last night. I was like, you're going to be up early. Yeah. Your weight's going to be up because you didn't get a proper night of sleep. So it is I saw, it is. I saw your stories. Did you get up to cardio before you went to the airport? I sure did. Oh my God. Yeah. So I like, if I wait till after travel day, you see how tired I am. It's yeah. not getting done. So I just know myself and like, I would rather get up at two 30 in the morning and knowing like when I get here, I knew that we were going to pod and then I needed to check my girls in tonight. And then I'm just going to relax. Yeah. So I just know myself too. Yeah. Well. See, I'm the opposite. It's so funny because we talk about all these things all the time. I'm the opposite. I get up, go to the airport. First thing I want to do when I get there is get my training. Yeah. I want to get the movement going. It's like that. I'm on the plane or whatever. Yeah. I'm in the car. A lot of it's the car. I drive, I drive a lot. Right. So for me, getting to where I'm going and then putting myself into you know, cardio or training or whatever is I have to do is more of my style. But do you put your, different strokes, different folks, but it still works. Like on a on a normal day though, when do you typically train? What time? Eleven a.m. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's. I mean, for me, it's usually a little bit later. We talked about this. I, t- I like to get all my work and stuff done yeah. first, and then I'll go when I have a ball. So it's usually around one to two o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. And I like going that time too because the gym is not packed. It's dead. Yeah. And I can actually get some equipment. Yeah. I don't know about you guys, but when I, you have your apartment gym or your condo gym. Well, we also train at a private gym out there. And then, cause I can't train at commercial gyms. I'm, I am, I'm, you're a snob. I'm a snob, <laughs> but I own my own gym in Tampa and it's very personal. It's very small and, and it's, it's very customized and I can't, I can't go into a crunch fitness. I just, I just can't. It's, I'll blow someone's head off. <laughs> it's pretty annoying. Like myself, I've started training more in my backyard. They have anywhere else like i i because i go to planet fitness it's down the street but i really only go there to do upper body yeah and that's it and if i need to do cardio or something and i don't want to use my elliptical at home yeah. i'll go there to do cardio but yeah it's i, I do Convenience. More- Convenience is everything. It is. Yeah. And trying to like wait for a machine when people just sit there on their phones like this. That's like that's what I'm saying. Like I can't deal with like I'm there to work. Like if yeah. you're there to sit on your phone, you could go do that. At the library. Yeah. I don't know. Somewhere yeah. else. Not here. <laughs> Not <No>. here. <laughs> it's like a trending thing right now, too, where people are getting mad at for being at the gym all the time. Because the thing is, they just stand there and they get in the way. Yeah. Like, I, I'm all about, like, go after your goals, go after your fitness, all this stuff. I want kids to go to the gym, but actually do what you're supposed to do when you're there. Yeah. Like, it's annoying when you're just going to stand there and just talk and, like, take up space and take up equipment and not actually use it. Yeah. The gym right now is 
the mall when we were kids. Yes. Like our parents used to drop us off at the mall. And I don't know what we did. We had yeah. no money, but we just yeah, walked around. Now mall. that's the gym. That's They're so just there for great. hours. And I never thought of it that way. That's so true. Yeah. Like we, that, that's what we did after yeah. school. We go to the mall. The mall or the movie theater, but you never went and saw a movie. No, <laughs> no. It's so funny because my parents were very strict, like overprotective, and they didn't want us going to like the mall or do anything like that by ourselves. So I always had to lie. <laughs> I always had to say, no, their parents are going to be there. I swear. The parents are going to be there. Just go to the mall. They were never there. They were never there. They were never there. <laughs> do, you t- do you tell them that now that you're older? I've told them a few. I don't think I've told them that specifically, but I've told them several yeah. situations like that. Were they surprised? I don't think so. I don't think I don't think I can surprise you at this point. I was I, you know, not my not my dad either. He's just like, yep, yeah, okay, whatever. Yeah, too much. You know, that's kind of the fun part of like growing up and like developing that relationship with your parents of like being a friend. You know, like we have that with Drew's parents. We're like in that cool age of where we want to hang out with yeah. them and be their friend. You know, so it's, it's cool to like be like, hey, mom, we used to do this, and she's yeah. like, what? yeah. <laughs> well, the funny part about that too is that Dan, Dan, my husband Dan, is closer in age to my dad than he is to me. <laughs> so, like, they get along really well. very well. Yeah. Like, uh, I don't know if that's something I should be bragging about, but you know, whatever. I, they Dan is a great the man, time, literally. You know? So yeah, you should be bragging together. about him, right? What do you always say? Age is an attitude. That is absolutely age is an attitude. He acts like he's younger than me, so you know, yeah. this it works for you. <laughs> I don't know who got the better end of the deal on that one. He got a hot bombshell, right? Boss babe, and you got the man that is completely amazing. Yeah, knight in shining armor, Mister Dan. I know, right? I love it. So, how are you feeling after uh, updating us with all your medical stuff last week? Yeah. So, since then, (laughs) Um, so I think that's one of the reasons why the scale moves. Everything we got this week is I got that under control as far as my colon is no longer blocked. So that's a good thing. Thank God, we're no longer blocked. (laughs) But, you know, I, I messaged you a couple days later or whatever, because I was looking at all the scans, the lab work and stuff that they handed. They actually handed me these papers at the hospital. The doctor handed me these papers. It wasn't like I went and looked it up. He's the one that handed me the papers. And it says I have a small mass on my left side that could potentially be a pelvary cyst. And I was like, I came in with my number one complaint being that I have pain on my lower back hand side of my lower back. And they, he specifically looked me in the eye and said, that's a really weird place to have pain. I'm not really sure why that would be happening. But I'm looking at the paper that he handed me, and it literally says that there is a two centimeter long thing in there that could potentially be a cyst. So just to be clear, he never brought this up no, to you. did not bring it up. So if you didn't read through that paperwork, you would still I would have still known would it. Not have known. I still would not have known. Yeah. So when we, when you messaged me about this, then we were talking about, this is why we say it's so important to advocate for yourself. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a shame that this is where medicine is going to at this point. And it's not everywhere, but it's more common than it should be, Yes, you know? So, okay. So now you found this now, what? Now what? Well, now I'm going to have to get tested and stuff like that. Probably ultrasounds, things like that. But the thing about this, that's so annoying is a couple of years ago, I went through the same symptoms. I went through the same pain. And I went to the doctor, I did the ultrasound, I did the testing, and they found nothing. Oh, wow. They found nothing. Yeah. So now here we are a couple of years later, literally it's been like two years, and they found something, didn't tell me they found something. And I'm like, it's the complete opposite. I'm just like, but the pain and the symptom is still the same. The same. Yeah. It's still the same. I'm like, I, and I, I remember specifically thinking to myself back then, I think this might be like an ovarian cyst or something. I remember, I remember thinking that to myself and I'm like, you were right. Here we are. Yeah. Here we are. So, yeah. you know, and, and that doesn't necessarily mean that, that, that like I have cancer or nothing like that. It doesn't mean that a rare cysts are very common, but they can be painful. If they get inflamed so pain. or they rupture or whatever, they can be very painful. So, yes. you know, it's, it's something you want to know about so you can manage whatever it is that's going on. Yeah. You know, and it's just, again, we go back to, this is why we talk about being an advocate for your own health all the time, because again, literally handed me those papers it was written in black and white on those papers and he didn't say anything about it it's it's almost scary to think about it is it really is it is because the funny thing and i told you this too because the funny part about it is i'm talking to him he's really cool and all that kind of stuff he's like yeah so you know i've been doing medicine for 16 years he's like and you know it hasn't really changed i like the social aspect of it better i'm thinking in my head medicine hasn't changed in 16 years 
really? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, really? Because from, from what I can tell, I'm like, I, I, I mean, our, our coaching has changed. changed. So how is medicine Research not is changing. Yeah. Approaches are changing. Maybe he's not changing. Know, his well, that's what, that, that really stuck in my head. Because yeah. I was like, medicine hasn't changed in 16 years. The last, last I checked it has. Yeah. But I said, I was like, I don't keep remember if I talked about this in the podcast or last week or not. But I said, they forgot about me in the, the natural. Place. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So I'm like, if they forget that I was actually in, in the hospital. Yeah. So you they know? just forgot to give you your diagnosis of what yeah. you were there for in the first place. Yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, like I told you, I'm shocked, but not. It's, but it's, it's sad. Like to almost expect that these days, you know, and I had a, I had a um, ovarian cyst rupture years ago, eight years ago. Drew and I were ju- just started dating. So it had to be more than 10 years ago now. And it's, painful yeah. painful like yeah. heart like gut-wrenching like I, it was it was it was only four hours but it was the most terrible four hours of my life and so if you didn't know this and then you get to the point where it does rupture that's all it's, it's just right oh it's just so frustrating because it's something that can be so easily taken care of right and, li- and i'm literally there for that reason right that was the whole thing it's like i'm i'm literally in the hospital for you to tell me what this is yes and just neglected that Oh, I just, just one little just one little problem right here. Yeah. No big deal. I'm like, okay. So, anyways, that was that was that. Um, but some of the things that I did this past week to kind of help with the patient, all that kind of stuff, uh, the blockage and all that is I incorporated Gatorade. That's my daily routine, basically. Um, and I started eating dates. Yum. I know, right? A lot of dates. I have like one every like twice a day or okay. whatever, depending on what my carbs can handle, that kind of thing. But I haven't had an issue going to the bathroom at all. And I haven't since taking, yet. I haven't oh. taking laxatives, I haven't been doing any of that stuff. So I, said, I was concerned about that. Yeah. You know? Getting, getting dependent on them. Right. It's still so early too in your prep. You don't want to get dependent on them that yeah. early on. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, at the end of the day, like I actually feel really good. Like even when I took my photos this morning and stuff like that, when I checked in, I was like, oh, I can actually pull my stomach tonight. Yeah. You know, I can actually twist and not be in pain. Yeah. But- you know, uh, t- those things, like when you got lower back pain. Oh God. You when it. you have lower back pain, everything's affected. When you're, yeah. you can't pose, you can't arch, you can't train, you can't walk. No. Like your lower back is like, connected to literally everything. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it was, it was a big, it was a big change in, in a good way. Yeah. And I feel like everything's going in, in the right direction. Now, like I feel, I feel leaner. Like I did before too, but there was just that one piece that was missing. You know, like I just mentioned this, like I was looking at videos and I looked like my abs were extending and stuff like that. It's been digestive issues, all that kind of stuff. I still not have the best sleep in the world. I still have this cough and congestion that's just lingering. You can hear it. I'm like so nasally. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not, it's, it's almost gone. Yeah. It's almost gone. I'm at the point now where I'm blowing my nose once a day versus 50 times a day. You know, so. <laughs> It's improvement just, yeah it's improvement <laughs> yes i still have to be careful when i when i laugh because when i laugh i start coughing okay so i still have to be careful about laughing so no jokes got Correct. it yeah yeah well, there goes one yeah, i know you probably noticed that a few times in this, in this podcast yeah. so um that's that's the one thing i have to be careful with but i actually have medication for that too is in a cough so i started taking that tonight's so that i I can sleep in the night. Okay. Because I was waking myself up coughing too. Oh, wow. Which is a terrible thing. And even more frustrating. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because sleep is so important too. Yeah. You know, especially when you're in front. So and makes you sense. grumpy. Yeah. If you don't get it. Yeah. Oh, there was, there was one morning I was just, I was just, I, I was tired. But from the moment, moment I woke up and Dan was like, how'd you sleep? I said, like, shit. He was, oh, okay. Okay. Got it. <laughs> got it. So I'm going to go this way now. <laughs> like I said, my laugh right there that ends in a cough. So I have to be careful about that. But, but yeah, I mean. At the end of the day, now I feel like it's just going in the right direction. Good. You know, my cardio is good. My training is good. I can those kinds of things. So everything's going in the right direction. Now I just got to go do all these appointments. If I don't know if I have a have cyst. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of cardio, it's interesting. I just checked in with Jamie again on Tuesday. Forget the lot, whatever, from last week. And I was telling you guys, like, my cardio is still only at 30 minutes. Like, again, once a, what, a, a, another check-in where she didn't change anything. So I'm still at 30 minutes of cardio, two hit sessions a week. She kept my macros the same and I'm still just dropping right nice. now. So I'm, I'm like blown away. This is the, the best <laughs> trip like, I've ever gosh. had. Literally like this is horrible. I know, thing. you know, but I've dropped almost 10 pounds with the same routine, which yeah. is crazy. And I'm about 14 pounds up from stage weight right now. So it's like, I don't know. I don't know how deep it's going to get. I'm sure we're going to get harder and you know, the closer we get, but man, it's just so cool to like really, really see like a proper reverse and how that helped me. 
yeah, it took time off. Like mentally, I was in a good spot from taking time off. And it really does like improvement seasons are meant to set you up for success. And like right. this, that was my best reverse. And to me, there's no, um, it's, it's, it's very prevalent that that was the setup for this great prep so far. So, so with that, have, I know you were kind of like, you're, you haven't really set a show day to get to that goal. Yeah, that one yet, or you just gonna still see where you're. We're, we kind of we kind of have some ideas out there. Um, I'm thinking about coming out out after the cutoff, so like in uh, September, I would love to be ready for Tahoe, but I'm not stressing myself because yeah. Tahoe's four weeks before I think I want to come out, or or four to six weeks before I'm thinking I want to come out. Okay. So at this point, I think we're like 12 weeks out from Tahoe. So being 14 pounds up from Siege, I either have to like super super push or come in like not at 100. percent So we'll see who knows like maybe the body just keeps responding if i'm ready i'm going to put myself in tahoe for sure if not i'm going to come out after that yeah yeah i mean coming out after the class not bad she could qualify for next year and do the same thing all over again <laughs> that's the plan that's the plan sean that's the plan you know i am taking a vacation at the end of this year so whatever i get around the olympia is what i get yeah, yeah so you know. well yeah. It's, you know it's nice to feel like you're it's like you're control yeah you know what i mean and you're not just at the at the whim of okay what's my body gonna do this yeah well you know we love being in control so <laughs> yeah oh, all of us competitors just love being in control <laughs> a little bit it's like spreadsheets upon you know work work orders upon calendar updates upon all this stuff our calendar our schedule the way our brain works yeah, yeah. i am like a robot in prep <laughs> which that will bring us lead us right into this weekend so. yes we thought one of the one of the things we could cover is kind of what we have to go through at a show when we're when we applying to it, right? Or coaching. Yeah, it's, it's 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 a little different. And I think people don't understand how much of a couple that can be sometimes. Like so how many how many clients do you have in the show? Four. Are they all NPC or your pros or anything like that? All NPC. NPC. Yes. yes. Are they all bikini or all bikini. Okay. All bikini and uh most of them. All of them are masters, okay. masters this weekend as well. Okay. Very, very competitive masters though. I'm having so much fun with the masters, so much fun. Their physiques are wild with like the, um, what do they call it for, uh, man, this, I've been up since two thirty, so <laughs> apologize. I mean, they're the, the longer the, the, the age, um, maturity, mature. Thank you. Muscle mature. Thank <laughs> maturity. you so much. Yes. Um, <laughs> the muscle maturity on these women are just insane, insane. So I have a uh, one true novice that's coming out this weekend. She looks phenomenal. Uh, the other three have competed before, but I'm taking that. I would took them on from other coaches and we've made significant improvements. Um, it's going to be a fun week. I'm excited. Awesome. Great. How about you? Um, I just have a couple of girls that I've worked with for their presentation. Okay. So there's that, but then I'm also doing the live stream commentary. Yes. So plug for that. Yes. Um, Get the live stream yeah. for the show. Yeah. It's garyunit.com. The, the top show that's on there right now is DC Flow Am. So if you click on that, you find the live stream. Um, the cool thing about what they do with this show is they have myself and um, Leo, say also a coach, um, an expert into the industry, done judging off of stuff too. And we commentate for the entire show. So we commentate for the men, for the women, for the NPC, for the pros. So I just tell people, like, this is a great show to get the live stream. Because you're going to get education during the live stream. Literally, like, learning yeah. from both of your different perspectives. Oh, it's going to be yeah. so good. So it's a lot of fun because, you know, obviously, like, men look at the sport a little bit different than what women do. So we don't agree on everything. And you can hear why our, our point of view is a certain point of view different, and things yeah. like that. So I have a lot of fun with it. Um, I know Leo does, too. And he has a background in journalism as well. So I can be answer. answer. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> um, we used to have, actually, we used to have this other guy that, that did it with us, Jerry. Um, I don't know if you knew Jerry Ward. Um, yeah. 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 But he passed away yeah. a couple years ago. Yeah. Actually, at Masters Nationals is where he passed away. So when we did the very Sweet first guy. commentary for DC Pro Am, it was three of us. Oh, cool. But, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. It was so much fun. I've known Gary, I, I knew Jerry from the beginning. Of wow. Life, but, like, wow. Really, really cool guy in the industry and everything. And, you know, significant loss in the industry. And yeah. Too. So we always like to kind of reflect and, and, and remember him. Hey, yeah. Shout him out. For so, sure. Um, it was a lot of fun. He was like the color commentary. It was very fun. He, he, for those of you who don't know, he had, he had a big YouTube following. Yes. He was one of the first like YouTube bodybuilding fit like influencer type guys and um with with rich piana and the the, the whole five percent or whatever it is and all that kind of stuff so anyway it was a lot of fun so we have a lot of fun at the show it's a long day um i'm just here at the host hotel now because she got in today it's thursday right and then tomorrow i will be here 
at check-ins to get the girls set up. I've got a few, like I said, I've got a few closing clients. I've got a couple girls in the pros, I've got a couple girls in the, in the MPC. Busy um, weekend for you. Yes, very busy. So I, I I try not to, so I do hair and makeup shows too. So I try not to book too many clients with, with hair and makeup because I just don't have time to do it. Yeah. So essentially what I do is I get on, get on Friday for the check-ins, get the girls set up, make sure we got their posing handled, got their, their soup stuff all handled, all that kind of stuff. Then we're good on Friday. Saturday morning, I get up, I go straight to the show to do commentary for the guys. I'll be on commentary till about noon, jump off, go get my girls ready for the afternoon because the girls start at three. Yeah, so that's different. We should maybe explain that. Yeah. It's not it's on a typical setup, but do they call this sessions, I believe? Yeah, I I I Everybody has a different choice. Okay. Energy, but yeah, sessions. So works. where the men go in the morning yes. and then the women go on in the afternoon and it's prejudging right into finals. Yes. Um, so it's not typical. Usually it's all men and women compete in the morning for prejudging and then they come back for finals. But right. I actually like this setup because the girls spend the most time with hair and makeup. So yeah. that allows them to sleep in a little bit, get their appointments and then prejudging starts at three, right? Yes. Which is great. Yeah. We do. So I'm the, this is the Maryland, DC, Mid-Atlantic zone, right? We do all of our shows this way. Oh, okay. Cool. Which is phenomenal for somebody who does hair and makeup. Yeah. Because I don't have to get up at two o'clock in the morning to do hair and makeup. You know what I mean? Yes. So yeah. So literally every local show here does it that way. So men are always in the morning, they do prejudging finals back to back. Okay. And then the women in the afternoon again, judging finals back to back. So they'll do um I think it starts with pros at three. Yes. Or, and with the men, it starts at nine with pros. Yep. Um then they'll go through pros prejudging, they'll go through NPC prejudging. Usually they have a little like 15 minute break, you know, go to the bathroom, whatever, come right back. And then they'll do men's finals, NPC finals. I love finals, that. NPC finals. I love that. So it's phenomenal. Um, as a competitor too, like you said, for, for women, it's great because you don't have to get up with the butt crack on crafty, which is great for the cortisol aspect of everything. And then don't feel inflamed, like having to get up at two 30 in the morning this yeah. morning. Um, and at so, finals, you don't have to wait for the guys to do all of their, their individual routines. routines. Yes. So they're already done. So it moves so much faster. And then you're eating by like eight o'clock. Yeah. 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 So it's a great setup. We started doing this during the pandemic. Oh, okay. So the whole reason why this started like this is because of capacity restrictions. That's right. To manage the audience. Correct. Got it. Cool. Yeah. So they would take people out for free to pull back in yeah. for the different sessions. So people ended up loving how that was set up. So they kept it. So they just kept it, just kept it for all, all the shows. Which it is makes fantastic. sense to me. Yeah. I really sense. like it because if yeah. somebody's there for their bikini athlete, they don't necessarily want to see the guys and vice versa. Right. So it really just helps the stage. It helps the judges. It helps the yeah. audience. I, I, lo- I love this setup for sure. I do too. Yeah. You know, and, and that's, that's a great point too. Cause like, I, you know, I just, the New York pro a few years back, my parents came to watch me. Right. I think I've mentioned this even on the podcast before. I'm backstage getting ready. And obviously they've got near pro. They've got every pro division. So my dad's in the audience texting me, um, how much longer till you're on? I'm like, no, no dad. I don't know. I just don't. That's the worst question on show day from your family. Isn't it? When are you going to be on stage? And no matter how many times they come to the show, they still ask the scene. I literally say, don't ask me. I have no clue what I'm going to go on to. No clue. No, like, and, and as an amateur, it's even worse. You literally have no clue. At least in the pro league, like you have like a start time and you know how many classes you could kind of estimate. That is the most annoying question on show day from your family. Yeah. So just be ready for that one, yeah. everybody. So the yeah. answer is, we don't I don't know. know. I don't know. I don't know. What time should I be there? At the start time. That's right. There when it starts. Yes. That's the other thing too, is you want to get there when they open the doors, so you get good seats. Yeah. That's something people don't realize too. It's like, you want to go in there. Like this afternoon, you're a pro. I'm standing outside working the booth, good body, right? And Erin texted me. She's like, you need to get in here because the seats are filling up. And I was like, okay, I'm coming. <laughs> you know, Sorry, like, let me leave the booth. And I'm like, I don't, I'm like, I don't even want to see the rest of the, of those, those divisions, but I got to get in there so I can have seats. Yeah. You know what I, I mean? Just bring, like, I just bring my laptop yeah. and do some work. Yeah. 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 I actually, like, I like watching the, the other divisions too. So it's not a big deal, especially when we're talking about pros. Yeah. You know, but when we're talking about family. Family doesn't care. Yeah. Family doesn't care. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so it's a part of that. You got to see the entire show. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's actually something that they do at the Euro Pro that they don't do with the other shows as well as they do sessions. Okay. So like first, like the first session in the morning, this morning, uh, try, I can't remember which submissions they had, but I think it was, I think it was classic, men's physique, female bodybuilding and something else, but they, they split them up. So that was like at 9 a.m. 
But then at noon is when like is well, and wellness, wellness is the morning too. But at noon, um, bikini, open men, okay, you know, the, the, those divisions, and then same thing at finals. So cool. finals, they split them up into two separate sections. Okay. Too. So if you're there to see all of the divisions, it sucks because you have to get new tickets for every single one of those. <laughs> well, that's the only downfall. Yeah, but if you're only there for one division, then you're good. Okay. You know what I mean? Got it. So, but I actually did like that because it kind of again it gave you a break in between and yeah, when the next next segment was going to start. Yeah. I think. So, going back to what we have to do with these weekends. So, for me, at a typical show. Now it's a little different because <laughs> because now that I do hair and makeup, I have to be up in the butt crack and all the hair and makeup to get them ready, get them on the Then I also have to respond to check in, things like that too. Yeah. Even if you don't have clients in the show that you're at, you still got clients in other other places. Yeah. Last weekend, I was home, but I had clients in Nevada. I had clients in Las Vegas. I had clients in Miami. I. I had like five different shows that I was trying to pay attention to all at once. Yeah. And people don't realize how stressful that is sometimes and trying to manage your time as a coach. So for you, like this weekend, you've got the girls here. Do you have anybody else competing? No, not this weekend. Okay. But I've been having to deal with that. And it's very, very difficult. It's it's really difficult when you're managing most of the time when you're at the show in person, that's where you push the majority of your clients to. So when you're there in person, I at least have you know, t- at least two athletes every weekend that I'm traveling to most of the time it's four or five. Yeah. Um, and then if I have one or two in other States, not only am I taking care of my four in person and all of that hands on time, but then you're also texting back and forth with the client that's in the other state, getting their face, getting on FaceTime with them, getting their videos, checking in with them constantly, making sure that they're where they're supposed to be. And you're trying to manage that athlete from so far away. Yeah. Um, so it is, it's really difficult to try to kind of, it's, it's you just got to be organized yes. and really find that time management. I find that it's very helpful to put everybody on a schedule. So yeah. like everybody comes and checks in with me at a certain time. That way everybody's feeling like they get really good one-on-one attention. And then I'm also scheduling the girl that's not with me around the girls that are. So that they're getting good one-on-one attention. So it's just all about that communication and that finesse. Yeah. I, I know I organized my whole schedule like days prior to yeah. And I and I understand that it's not gonna be perfect nope. because the girls are gonna go like I'm not at their show. We're gonna go get their hair and make it done, their tan done. It's gonna take them half hour longer than they expected it to. So you know, you have to you have you to buffer put all that stuff in there. Yeah, you already have that in the back here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So and like I had one girl that was she's like, I I know you had people all over the country. I felt bad about about contacting you. I was like, no, don't feel bad. I'm like, this is your show weekend. Like that's that's what I want you to do. Yeah. You know, now. Now I may, may not be able to respond right away yeah. that moment, but I will get back to you as soon as I can. So like, again, last weekend, not only did I have the girls eat, but I also had girls at, that I was doing sessions with in my studio. Right. You know, so if I'm home, I'm, I'm, I'm still working on with girls at home. Yeah. So. And most of the time clients that aren't competing that weekend, but they are sending you in a check-in or maybe they're competing in yes. two weeks, whatever. They understand that because when their yes. show day comes, they will know that they want that attention. So they're giving that grace to the girls that are competing this weekend. Um, but it, it is, it's, it's really important as a coach to kind of manage all of that. And our schedule is priceless. Like yes. it is literally priceless and communication with our clients. You know, if they're checking in on a Saturday and they know it's a busy show weekend, my girls know that I may not get back to them until Sunday. Yes. Most sometimes things happen. Show weekends don't go the way they're supposed to. Nevada last week, they called a one hour break in the middle of the show and nobody was ready for it. And, you know, that can kind of throw some things off. So it's just schedule communication and, um, show weekends are busy, you know, like literally from the second that I get off this podcast tonight, I have three of them that are already here. We're going to start our nightly check-ins. I want to see them before their last meal, before I put them to bed tonight. As soon as I wake up tomorrow, I send them all a message. They're coming in my room and checking in with me. Then I got to go take care of me. I got to go do my check-ins. I got to go do my cardio. I got to do my training. By the time I get back, I'm on console calls. And then I'm flipping right back into check-ins tomorrow night and checking the girls in again. So it is a wild, it is a wild weekend. And that's why Saturday night after the show, all the girls are like, can you go out to dinner with me? I'm like, no, I love you. But like, I'm like. I want to go back to my room. Yeah. So you're just a minute. And then, you know, you're saying hi to all your friends at the show and you're saying you're (laughs) hugging everybody. You're talking, you're catching. It is a long week. It is. It is. You know, but, and that's the thing, like we love doing it. Absolutely. (laughs) Like we wouldn't do it any other way. No. (laughs) Um, But, you know, this in times, like, why not to kind of go through this too? Because I think sometimes, like, like I was saying, the girl from last week, she's like, I felt bad. I was like, I think sometimes clients, don't understand what we're what we're going through. Like 
I know for myself, I can be very direct with some of the things that I, you know, shoot a quick text message off and it's like, boom, just go do this. I'm not being mean. I'm just trying to get the, the, the point across to go do this. Quickly. You yes. know what I mean? You're good. Go. Yes. You know? And I try to keep things as simple as possible. I try not to overcomplicate things for people. I try to say, we're going to do X, Y, Z, whatever I told you to do on Friday. That's what you're going to do. You know, once I see, like, good example, I want to see your photos. As soon as I see your photos, if I need to change anything, I'm going to change anything. If not, we'll just stick it to the plan. You've already got your plan ahead of time. You yes. already know. The only reason we're going to change anything is if we need to. Yeah. You know, if we need to fill you out more, we need to pull the water back, whatever, whatever it is, whatever it might be. We're not going to change anything. You know the plan. You know the plan. You can set it up on your own spreadsheet if you want to. You know the plan. And as long as you communicate with me and do the things I ask. I'd just like to take a moment to welcome our new channel partners, Prozis. If you are unfamiliar with them, go ahead and go down into my description box now. Click on the link. Go check out their site. They are the leading supplement sports nutrition company based out of Portugal. Been around for 17 years. You might be asking what makes Prozis unique. Well, everything that they make is made in-house or with trusted partners. They have to go through rigorous testing in Portugal in order to even get any products on the market. So what you're gonna find, you're gonna find really high quality, pure supplementation. And one of the biggest things for me is I have some GI issues. So being able to eat some of these more healthy protein treats and things like that and not have any gut issues, oh, worth its weight in gold. Go check them out. Click on the link in my description box below. Use the code QDS10 to get all of your discounts and even some special surprises. They're always putting out some amazing promotions. Let them know that I sent you and let me know what you think. Thanks again for watching and thank you for supporting our channel. Now, go optimize your own athletic abilities and check out prosis.com. No, it's back up. It's back up. Okay. Okay. Oh. It's back up. We're still going. I'm like I'm watching the ticker. We're still, we're still recording. Yes. I'm going to be behind the bikini without some sort of technical issue. issue. Yeah. So, right. So back to what we're talking about. So when I get to Saturday night, when the show's over and all that kind of stuff, to be honest with you, that that's kind of the hardest part because then you have to manage clients and whatever just happens. Correct. <laughs> so for some of them, they are on cloud nine because everything went fantastic. They're super excited. You know, we're, we're, we're so happy about everything that for others. They did not meet their expectations. They did not do what they want, what they set out to do. So they're like, so you have to be this, this, this plane of in the middle somewhere because you've got people way up here and you got people way down here. And sometimes those people are at the same show together. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, most of the time. Uh, yeah. And it's like, okay, well, you want to be happy for this one. Yeah. But you got to manage that happiness for the one that, that wasn't, that didn't hit whatever she wanted to do. Yeah. Right. So and that's it's, tough. It's a very, very tough place. I know for myself, Saturday nights tend to be the nights that I sleep the worst. Yeah. Because I want to make sure that I've managed those things as best as possible. Yeah. Because we're a team at the end of the day, right? When, when one of our athletes win, we win. And when they lose, we lose. Yeah. And, um, you know, we try as coaches to set realistic expectations. But ultimately, at the end of the day, like I could think my athlete looks, you know, A1 and, you know, their third that day. Yeah. The very similar situation happened. I brought two girls to girl power. I for sure thought both of them were getting nationally qualified. They both got third and yeah. we couldn't go to junior USAs and they were devastated. And so was I, however, we learned a lot. We got, we got feedback. They both went into an mini, mini improvement season and they're both looking better and coming out later this season. Were we heartbroken at that time? Yeah. And it, it was, it was, it was hard in between prejudging finals. They both came to my room. They were both upset and it's managing that. And, you know, as coaches, or I should say good coaches are sponges. You know, yeah. we absorb that. We absorb those feelings and those emotions because we truly do care. And like I said, like when, when our athlete loses, so do we, and we take the responsibility of where could we have done better? What, what do we need to do next? And Saturday night, usually when I get back to my hotel room, I start the plan for that client yeah. to start on Monday while the feedback is fresh and while my ideas are going in my mind. Okay, Sandy wanted this. So I'm going to do this, 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 get the plan done. And then the plan's ready for them on Monday. Um, so yeah, most of the time I'm not going back to my room and just, you know, doing nothing. I'm still thinking about everything, still digesting everything, still digesting my own thoughts and feelings about it, and then executing that plan for them. And I know for myself too, like I try to, again, manage everything on Saturday, let them breathe on Sunday. Yeah. You know, meaning like, go do what you want to do. Like most of the time, but depending on the person, I'll say some things to the effect of try to stay as close to your macros as you can, but go have some fun, fun foods, go hang out with your family, whatever it might be. Just don't go too crazy. Don't try to introduce too many sugars and things like that. They're going to make you want to binge, you know, just hold, hold tight onto that as best you can. And then we'll go through everything on Monday. Sure. 
by Monday, at that point, they've got some extra carbs in their system or a burger or whatever. They're feeling a little bit better. You know, they've got some extra glycogen going through their brain, you know, <laughs> and we can assess things from a non-emotional state. Yeah. So on, on Monday, we can go through and say, okay, so X, X, Y, and Z happened. We want these other things to happen. Sure. Right. So how are we going to get there? How are we going to manage this? You know? So giving that extra day to just kind of process everything and let everything kind of simmer and settle down tends to be, for me, a good, good option. But then we don't, we don't ultimately leave it hanging, right? Like I want to get you on the phone on, on Monday. Oh, for sure. So then that way we have a plan going forward. Absolutely. It still blows my mind how many coaches like just ghost their clients yeah. after shows. Like, yeah, I don't know any coaches personally that do this, but I hear so many yeah. times on a console call, like even I didn't hear from my coach on show day. Yes. What? Like that's, Wait, what do you mean? Like, that's the day you've been working for, or like the day after the show. Yep. My coach goes to me. I never got a reverse plan. I never heard from them. Nothing like yeah. that's the most important time, not only just to set the plan and the macros and things like that, but just like you're saying, Sean, to set the emotions to, to recap and talk about it because it's true. After the show, you're so emotional. You're just going through all these things. You're disappointed. You're, you know, wondering what you could have done better, blah, 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 blah. But then when you kind of take some time in 24 hours, you get a meal, you spend some time with your family. You're like, yeah. okay, I am proud. Okay. Now let's talk about the feedback and, and what is the move next? And most of the time when they have that plan or that feedback from their coach, you know, I know when my girls are having a freak out moment, we just get on a quick call. We talk through everything. We come up with very constructive and precise steps and it's it's good for them because yeah. then they feel really grounded again yeah and it's funny that you mentioned the whole ghosting thing because that actually happened to one of my clients last week she messaged me she's like you know she's like thank you i'm posting I'm just a post coach but thank you for responding to me. I was like of course it's, it's what i do or i know i hate that and she's like well my coach kind of ghosted me all, all week i was like what yeah I was like, okay, like that's not, that's not okay. No, you know what I mean? it's not that's acceptable. Not okay. That's not acceptable. So, and we still see these things on Reddit where some girls are like, is this normal? Like, yeah. am I bothering my coach? Like, are they supposed to be reaching out to me on show yeah. day? Yes. yes. Your coach should be talking to you all weekend, yeah. literally until the new plan is set on Monday. That's like right. literally all week. Yep. That's right. And you know, and I, even I'm that person too, that if I haven't heard from them, like it's Saturday or it's Friday or whatever, and I haven't heard from them, time that we set yeah I'm like hey you might get pictures yeah and usually what they'll do is be like oh yeah i just got stuck at tanning whatever it might be yeah you know, they got stuck somewhere else and the show went a little bit longer or whatever it is yeah so but yeah I'm, I'm like that's on my schedule you're supposed to be checking in with me you're not so where are you yeah you know what i mean yeah really simple yeah i always find it interesting when i have to like reach out to the client like yeah hey hey like, okay? i'm here yeah. like are you gonna check in yeah. with me i'm like oh yeah yeah you know let me send you my photos um but yeah i think i think that a lot of the times too like i don't know i've said this to you before too i'm sure you felt this way like hey i don't want to bother you and she yeah. always responds like hey you're never bothering me yeah, like yeah, yeah but that's the story that we tell ourselves because coaches are so busy we yeah. are all very busy we're traveling we're this like literally i can find something to work on 24 seven if i wanted to but at the end of the day, we do this because we love it. And we love the relationships that we've made with our athletes and other coaches and other teams. And we do this because we love it. And because we, we truly want to take care of you. And that's what I, that's what I mean. Like we are a team, yeah. like me and my client, we're the team, like whatever I think we're doing, I think is 100% best for you. And whatever the ship does, I'm riding it with you. That's right. Cause I, I want you to be successful. And again, Success looks different for every person. Absolutely. You know, sometimes it's a placing, sometimes it's a book. You know, I, again, I had a girl last week. It was just about redemption from her last show. Yeah. You know, she's like, I just want to look better. And literally, every, she was she did, this, she did the same show, basically. Like, it was all the same judging yeah. panel, promoters, everything like that. Everybody came up to her at the show. It was like, oh, my God, you look so much better. That's what it was all about. That's redemption. Yeah. That's what it was all about. It's like, yeah. okay, now now we can go full with our goals. You know, she just signed up on new coach you know she just signed in with the coach i wanted to get her some confidence and all that stuff. I was like, listen that was the whole point of this i wanted you to be able to trust good yeah. you know i wanted you to get on stage and know that we could trust him. Yeah. and you know the feedback was phenomenal you know what i mean perfect so that's managing expectations yes you know yep. and setting realistic goals and also showing that i'm on her team yeah like you were just saying i'm like I, I want you to be better i want you next time we get you on stage to be better i want you to have the same reaction that you just had from all those promoters and judges the next time we get on stage right right we want to be a thousand times better next time too. Yeah. Right. So those are the, those are the fun things about it. You know, it, it gets very highly emotional anxiety and things like that. But I'm thinking, I know for myself, I don't sleep on the show weekends. 
I just don't. No. Nope. <laughs> and it's just, it just is what it is. But my head's going like It's this. because we care. Yeah. You know, like, fr- yeah. like Friday night before the show, I am literally wielding, like, did I do everything? Yeah. Should I have done something more? Should I wake this athlete up right now and feed that? Yeah. Like, you are, you're thinking of everything because you care. That's right. You know, and I, I feel like saying, like, the, the coaches that are sleeping well on Friday night are either just, like, super, super confident or just... Don't care. care. Yeah. Like it's one or the other. Yeah. So I don't think any, I don't think any coach is super confident. I mean, cause it, there's just so many things that can happen. Absolutely. And it's like, Absolutely. you just have to be ready for any, you do. <laughs> it's like, you, you just do. do. Yeah. You just have to be ready. Cause I, I mean, it, little things like for me, when I got my period in Hawaii, <laughs> yeah. You know, but you knew it was coming, even though you knew it was coming, yeah. it's still like, and it's like that disappointment and like, okay, what do we do? Like, yeah. It's yeah. like, oh man, we got to manage it somehow. Yeah. You know, we got to figure it out somehow. Yeah. I'm not, I'm like, I'm here. I got to get on stage. Yeah. You know what but I mean? Again, ready for anything. Yeah. 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 So it's fun because it's, it's, that's one of the things that's cool about it too, is it's fun because you never know what's going to happen. It's, that's the challenge. <laughs> yeah. That's, well, we always say that there's lots of challenges in the sport, which is why it makes it interesting why we keep coming back, but um, it's still a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, it's so funny too because it makes me laugh because I'm like, we care about this so much and it's a freaking bikini show. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, you're going to go on the station in a bikini. That's what you're doing. Literally. It's not like, it's not like life or death. No, but it's, but, but it feels like it sometimes. Yeah. I mean, it's 30 seconds of months and years yeah. of hard work. And yeah. Yeah. When you really put it down in like that dumbed down version of it and that simplistic version of it, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. Pretty well, and that's something that I actually tell my clients too is that at the end of the day, you do up there and have fun with this because yeah. it's not life or death. It's not. It's supposed to be a hobby. It's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be something that challenges you and changes you to be better in whatever way it may be. You know, just being physique wise, it could be your med school, whatever it might be. Like you better enjoy it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you just, you, you have to enjoy the process. And, you know, I think that a lot of people get so caught up in the hard and the restrictive and, and listen, that mindset and that attention to detail is what gets you successful in the sport, but you do have to take a step back sometimes and like let off the gas a little bit and like enjoy what the process. I know we talk about that all the time, but truly enjoying and embracing the day to day, because that's truly why we do this sport is because we love to train. We love to body build. Like that is literally what it means at the end of the day. And you don't get that from stepping on stage. You get that from all the moments before that. That's right. No, I get it. It sounds so cliche, but it really is. It's It's very simple. It's very simple. And I mean, I I also on the coaching aspect of it, I think it's part of the journey too, is learn something new every time we go climb up the stage. God, I learn something new every day. Like I, there's still so much that I need to learn and that I don't know. And that, you know, I, I, I always say this quote, everybody always, I always want to be the stupidest person in there. Yeah. I don't always want to be an educator. Like I, you know, started coaching back in 2021. I started coaching in 2020 is just a life, which is just lifestyle. So 2021 is when I really started taking on athletes. So it's really not been that long. I just have done so much studying to get me to where I am. And there's still so much that I can learn. Should always be a student of the sport. Well, going back to that's why I'm pissed about that doctor in the ER saying that medicine didn't change in 16 years. Well, that's just, I'm sorry, blatantly ignorant. Like it's just ignorant. Like, but you know, and that's, you know, it's, it's funny. Like I wish Drew would come on and talk about this more on his social media. Like he's going through a little bit of like a rough patch right now because you know, his new job, not new, newer job on Fit Body Fusion is education educate but drew also loves to learn he loves to learn and he doesn't have time right now to learn and that's something that he's really really wanting and both him and i love continuing education classes and going and finding mentors and it's just something we haven't been able to do and we felt like professionally we're lacking the the last few months and like we finally figured out because we haven't learned anything you know so it's you know that that you should always have that yearning to want to be better and to keep learning and to keep progressing with the sport because the sport was not the same as it is now from a year ago. And it's certainly not the same as it was five to 10 years ago. It is everly changing. Yep. Um, so I think more people need to, to have that growth mindset. Right. Well, I think that's actually one of the issues in our industry right now too, because you know, the, I came out of fit body as an athlete four years ago, Yeah. you know, the whole reason I did it was because I came from these archaic views of bodybuilding with every other coach that I've been with, you know, it's just meal plans, tilapia and cod and whatever and asparagus. You know what I mean? That's just what we did. And Ground like, beef asparagus. Yeah, right. I'm like, there, there has to be a better way. That's the whole reason why I came to Fit Body in the first place. You know, and then that made me better as an athlete, which then made me want to be better in a, in a coach. 
I'm like, and, and, you know, same thing. I'm like, okay, now I'm learning this. Now I'm growing in this. I'm always trying to build on what I did last, yesterday. Yeah. You know what I mean? And there's just so many people in our sport out like that. Yeah. You know, you're right. That are not like that. They, they're like, they're still stuck in old ways. Sometimes I talk to these like old school guys that are still part of the industry and they're just so stuck in their old ways. Like it doesn't have to be like that. Well, and not, there's not a one size fits all approach for everybody in oh. the sport. And Jamie is is very open that that's why she created the body fusion yeah. because she was on that mindset as well with previous coaches of like, you know, ground beef, asparagus, that's it. Like, and she was like, there's gotta be a better way. And I know we've talked about that, but like, that is the foundation of fit body and why Jamie created this company is because she wanted to make a way for athletes to have balance, you know, and macros do allow that, you know, macros are such a great tool for that autonomy and that balance of life. Um, and I really do think that we're, curbing a lot of other things that can come around from bodybuilding, like eating disorders or food focusness and hormone issues because of these lifestyles that we're creating and these tools that we're giving to our clients. You know, for all of us on Fifth Body, I feel like I could speak for all of us coaches, like we're thinking about our clients way past age day. You know, I'm, I'm trying to think about my clients, you know, when they're done competing in five years, like, are they going to take these tools to create a healthy, sustainable life when they're done competing? That's truly like, that's, that's the key. That's, that's the key to the success. Yep. You know, um, I, I love that we're all in that growth mindset on Fit Body Fusion right now. And like the way that we are all so we're keeping our clients health first yep. in all areas of life outside of the stage. Well, and even that to, to the stage, both communities, just, I just launched my new membership site, Backstage yeah. Cast. Uh, so, which, which went amazing, by the way. I'm really excited about that. But Congrats. Thank you. You're welcome. But like seeing it from a different vantage point for women as competitors in this sport too. You know, we need stuff that's different than men do. We need the community. Yeah. We need the support. I have women that are that are now part of Backstage Pass that don't know if they're ever going to compete, but they just want to have that support system. Yeah. They want to have those other women that are at least thinking the same way they're thinking. This, yep. And the same journey. Yeah. That. Yep. Even if they don't make it to stage, but still on the same journey. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And it's, they're, it's crazy that there's nothing like that. You know what I mean? Like, no. like the, the, I, there's so many things that I've done in this industry. And I'm sure that you've been the same way where I've had people come to me and tell me it's not work. Oh, there's, there, if there's I, no work. if I had a penny for every time that I've heard it, a yeah. penny and I'm like, okay. And it's worked. Yeah. Because if we believe in it and we truly put all of it, which you've done with shots before, like, I mean, it's, it's amazing. Like I've said that about cuties, like it truly is that community is something very special and there's nothing like it, yes. but you believed in it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people told you, no, it's not going to work. And look, it's flourishing and it's still the only one like it you know. because it's special. You know. Yeah. It's so hard. It's so hard to explain it to people too, because it's so hard to explain. It's, it's, it's indescribable. It exists anywhere no, else. It's, it's like truly indescribable. To, you know? yeah. yeah. So, but that's, too, isn't that for gains part of your legacy as far as like, what mind or that stuff? Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, it's fun. If you couldn't tell, if you guys couldn't tell, we're a little bit passionate about what we do. Oh, I'm not passionate at all. But you <laughs> I, I only traveled 32 weekends last year for shows. Like what? I know. Right. I was like, this is the first, oh, I'm trying to think of this month. So I've got a show here, which is technically local, but I'm still not still traveling. Yeah. yeah. I'm still not home. What's, what's the next show? Are you going to the junior nets? I'm not going to junior nationals. No. I don't even know what's, I know. Next I, weekend's Dallas. You yeah, have, not, you have Angel in that one. Yes, but I'm not yeah. going to, she just got her suits today too. And I saw pictures of her in them and they look phenomenal. I'm just saying. <laughs> Brushing her shoulders off. <laughs> Angel's a, she's a wellness yes. competitor. She coaches with Drew and Sean that does her posing in her suits. Yes. yes. Yeah. So, and she's, she goes to Kitty Scarf for the stage too. Yes. So, um, Universe is coming up. Universe, July 4th weekend. Yeah. So again, that one will be at that one. I think I have like seven clients in that show. Just if, sure. if you see me, just give me caffeine. Okay. Yeah. Well, oh, that's, that's, so that's hilarious. So funny part that you just mentioned that. So tomorrow, right? Someone's on live stream all day. I mean, Friday or Saturday. Or yes, yeah, Saturday. So, um, I get a text from Jennifer. Uh, yeah. You know, Jennifer. Yeah. And she didn't even ask. She's like, so I'm coming for the, for the men's finals to start with awards. She helps out with right. She's okay. like, she's like, do you want me to bring your, your, your Americano then? I was like, yes, that'd be awesome. Yeah, bring five. 
wanted it. She's like, do you want me to bring you the, your Americano then? I'm because like, she yeah. knows she's bringing you one. It's just at what preference yeah. of time do you want it? Yeah. yeah so like literally oh, like perfect. 6 a.m. noon and five. Yeah. Like that's when I need caffeine. That's right. That's right. Right. Because that's, that's what's going to happen is I'm going to have my coffee before I get a cup to commentary. Uh, yeah. She'll come, she'll come carry my next one for, for finals for the men. Oh, yeah. And I'll need another one when the women start. You know, we can still. It's fine. Uh, We're fine. Caffeine and and take me up here. That's good. We're fine. That's all good. Manage it with water later. No, you could no. It's like drinking. It's like you do a one stop sip of caffeine, one sip of water. Yes, yeah. it's it's just balance. Except that I can't do that when I'm on a live stream all day because I have to go pee every five seconds. Oh no, you don't. We'll just get a blow up doll, and then you know when Leo's talking, it's like you're there. Right there, you go. Right, see one of those shiwis. <laughs> and, I'll, I'll shiwi, and I'll have a little, I have a little bucket. <laughs> I mean, that's a, that's the worst part, A, about being a woman, but B, being in prep and pushing a gallon of water yeah. is a, like, doing commitments like that yeah. sucks, because you just, you have to pee. I love when clients are like, well, what do I do? I don't have to pee all the time. Go, go pee. <laughs> go. Like, just, figure just it out. go pee. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Yep. No, one way or another. Figure it out eventually. And plus, you know, I'm, I'm getting older, too. I'm like, I'm glad I'm still working. Oh, God, here she goes. Here she goes. Now she's going to start saying she's got <laughs> incontinence or something. All right. Well, if anything, I get stopped a lot more than me. Yeah, true. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, you should be grateful. You can, you, you're going right now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yep. No, no jokes. No jokes. So, anyway, we have to do one weekend. So, I can't really think of anything else that goes on on show weekend. Yeah. I mean, it's just a lot of backstage. Like, yeah. I'm literally backstage until my girls hit the stage, like helping them pump up, telling them well, what Watching to- little things too. Like if you got a splotch in your tan, go get that fixed, you know, go cut, cut your hair backstage. I've done that. Done that a hundred times. times. You know, done that a like hundred times. Yeah. Let me, let me run you through your routine so I can look at you, like make sure that you're not hanging out of your suit or whatever. It it's like be. imposing adjustments. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's a lot, but the girls feel so good when you're back there. Like I, when I first started competing, my coach was never backstage. Um, and I was like alone, I wasn't on a team and I was like watching all the coaches backstage and the girls. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, this sucks. Like, am, am I doing what I'm supposed to do? Is this how I'm supposed to be pumping up? Should I be eating right now? Like you're just going off of what everybody else was doing. So I love that they feel safe back there and like they're protected and like, they know exactly what's happening, exactly what to do. They have my support back there. And, and we get the commentary all the time from people. Like, I can't tell you after how many show weekends that I have requests from girls that are like, I just saw you backstage and yeah. like, I want that. Yeah. And I love that because that's what we all deserve. You know, we work really hard, but not only on top of that, it's an expensive sport. Yes. Like I understand coaching's expensive. Like that's why my preference is when a girl's competing, I want to put them where, where we are. Yeah. Like I want that, even if it's not me on site, if you were on site right. at another show, like I would feel so comfortable with my girls going and checking into your room and yes. you know, posing. Like that's how we work. And they feel so much better that way too. No, and I've had that several times because since I've been with Fit Body, I haven't been at the same show where Jamie's been there. Right. So she's had people come check on me, make sure that I'm good. Yeah. Well, she'll get she'll get on FaceTime with them, with me, and ask them like, can you like, what does this like look like? Yeah, what does thing? she look like? You know, is she flat? Stuff. Is she full? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, right before this, I was filling up my water in the gym, and there was one of our girls, one of Shelby's athletes, walking on the treadmill. She's like, Jordan, oh my god, I'm so happy that you're here, and like yeah. that's so cool to hear. Like I'm not her coach, but just she knows someone's here on site if she needs something. Yeah. Um, and that means everything, you know. Like that is peace. Yeah. You know. And I'll also say this too, because I get this a lot after shows. Come talk to us during the show too. Like if you see us and you want to come say something or you have a question or whatever, yeah. feel free to come talk to us. Like you don't have to feel like like because you're not my client or whatever. I hear that a lot. Like I don't want to bother you. You're not bothering me. Never. Well, that's what I'm here for. No, but I'm the girl that's like taking care of my girls. And like, if I see other girls that yeah. are not on our team with their tags sticking out, like I want you to look Absolutely. your best. Like, I don't care who you are. Like, I want you to have a great experience. So like I am, and that's how I am too, as an athlete. Like when I'm in a lineup of girls, if the competitor in front of me, like has something off, I go fix it for them. Like, and I would hope somebody would do that for me too. You know, that was something that happened. I don't think anybody's addressed this at all. Pittsburgh. So when he came out on stage for finals, Bikini. yeah, okay. Um, Vanya yeah. still had her clip in her hair, like her, like like the, the little makeup clip to keep her yeah, like bang out. Clip. Yeah, and nobody took it out for her backstage. She came when she she did a routine and went off stage. When she came back out for like the confirmation, so she passed out. She figured she figured it out. I'm like, how did nobody see that backstage? How did nobody see that? I would find that hard to believe, but I know. I don't wasn't there. 
Well, I don't, it, it happened to me before. Like, this is one of the reasons why I, I usually get my hair done by somebody else, and not myself when I'm at a show with a beating, because I had like a bird's nest in the back of my head. I'm like, why didn't anybody just go like tell me to brush it down? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I would. I know. I would. Well, I don't know. I feel it. like people are like, I don't know. Maybe they're trying to like protect you or like not make you freak out. But like, I would rather you just be like, hey, like, girl, you need to calm the back yeah. of your head. Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Like, and there's certain things that you don't see until they're out there posing. Like, I've seen that happen before sure. where the suit doesn't yeah. work or whatever. But you don't see this way. But those little things, like a freaking hair clip, just clip out. Yeah. To be fair, she was the first one in line. True. So no one was like in front of her and by well, her. That's the only thing I could think of. <laughs> but no, she wasn't first you laugh about that because that she always is first because her last name is august but there was somebody ahead of her oh show. okay um so who was the name who was who was ahead of her what's maria's last name the costa yeah okay so she was ahead of her. okay yes i was like because we were laughing oh about that would that. make sense because a c and then yeah. a u yeah, yeah. we okay. were laughing about that because she was not first so Dang, Vanya yep. was probably like <laughs> i love her but i love when vanya's in one of my shows because she just goes out she's the first yeah. one on stage and she just sets that tone man i love her mm-hmm. stage presence she does a great job yes yeah, she does she does but i'm like I, I just don't know i'm like i wasn't backstage i was up front if i was backstage i would have it out for oh for sure i mean if you guys see that and you're like you there's a girl in front of you like help them like yeah like you you want to compete against that girl look at her best and you want to be your best like be, that's sportsmanship to me like that is definitely sportsmanship absolutely yeah so, you know and i get it sometimes too. i'm gonna i'm gonna use the I'm gonna give everybody a damage hand mission here too maybe they weren't paying attention yeah you know they were just paying attention to themselves which is which is a thing I, it's very much it's a, a thing. thing yeah so if that's a, you know i mean who knows uh, we'll, we'll do a once over on yeah. yourself before you hit stage yeah make sure she got that covered too and if you're one of my clients i'm doing that for you yep <laughs> yep yep um, that's the whole point right that's why we're there yes that's why we're there <laughs> i will have slack so this was this is a um this was a couple years ago Tampa. one of my girls those of you that know karen i know karen this is still hi she's, karen yeah. <laughs> she's um she, she we told the story several times so she came out with finals she's pro thinking and she came out in the finals and she had her sleep bottoms on backwards. <laughs> and I'm like, so I started, I was in the audience and I started recording and I just stopped. Because <laughs> I was like, did you she, run back there? The, no, because they wouldn't let you back there. So, but no, um, the funny part about it was she had done that practice before. Like when we were going through her routine, I was like, Karen, <laughs> your sleep bottoms are on backwards. Go turn them around. So you would think that by the time she got stage, she would remember to put her soup bottoms on the right way. Crap brain. Yeah. I was like, no. Well, those are, this those is when you're like, yeah, Karen. Yep. Okay, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> put the photo here of that, of that, please. Yeah, right, right here. <laughs> no, for real. But, you know, the good thing about it was, you know, that was one of those finals where they just came out, waved their hands and walked off. So it wasn't like she was in a huge whole routine or anything like that. If she had done the whole routine, that would have been a problem. She realized that her suit bottoms were on backwards when she was standing backstage about to walk on. So there was nothing she could do about it at that point. So I'm just trying to think if I had a few seconds, what would I do? I know, right? Do I just can't, can't do that backstage? Like, what do you do? Oh, like I would, I would literally probably ask the girls to like hover around me. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. That's probably what I would do too. Yeah. Grab the grab the curtain. Yep. Go go in the curtain curtain real quick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the curtain of the stage. Just hold on one second. Just, yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. I would figure it out. I'm not I'll going on stage with backwards. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Good for you, Karen. Though. Good I know, for you, she, girl. She, you she, did it. As soon as she got off stage, she texted me. Did you see it? I was like, Yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you practiced like that yesterday. Yeah, I right? guess you were trying to do it on Wow. Oh boy. She's done that in sessions like like. FaceTime sessions and stuff like that too. She cracks me up. I love kids so much. There was a girl that I met at our uh, San Antonio uh, posing seminar. She was so cute. So you know, like the style of like a uh, bikini top, like literally like a like a swimsuit bikini top, where yeah. girls are doing it like upside down. Upside yes. down. Yeah. So she came out um, for the posing portion, and her um, competition suit was upside down. So I was like, oh, okay, she's trying to do the tread, but with a competition yeah. suit. So long story short, this girl comes up to me um, after the thing and we're t- after the seminar, we're talking and we had a really great conversation. She reached out to me late, 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 a week later to coach her. And she said, yeah, I'm a, 
I'm the girl that had the backwards bikini top. I was like, girl, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know if you meant to do that. She's like, no, I was so embarrassed. Yeah, I had a client do that. I didn't realize it until I saw pictures from the show. I actually competed with the suit on upside down. So like, like the connectors went around this way. Yeah, strap went around this way. She had the back strap around her. I was like, (laughs) upside down. How does that even happen? Maybe in your suits, you should put, you know how they have sheets where it says bottom? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you should put like top, <laughs> bottom, <laughs> side. <laughs> I just don't understand how that happens. Yeah, me neither. But, you know. But but like, especially like there's, because there's different pictures to the suit. Like the connector goes around here. The are just supposed to go here. Like why, why would there be no connector here? Because the trend of the, of the swimsuits, they're, they just, they just, you know, Please don't do that with your competition. No, <laughs> no, it just looks weird, and it becomes one of those things where we just, that's all you can look at. So did they do that on purpose? Or they do that? That's what I was thinking yeah. with the girl that yeah. uh, that she's now coaching with me. Her, she's awesome, but it's funny. It's yeah, funny. It's, well, and we'll the, remember that forever. I mean, the, the bottoms, like the bottoms have a scrunch in them, and you would think literally that's the first thing I thought of when you said that. Karen yeah. said that. Karen, I want to see this video. Yeah. You better send it to me. No. Like, <laughs> I've had girls do that when they first try their suits on. Like before they go wear it on stage, like I've had them send me videos and stuff, and they when they get their suit, and I'm like, there's like I have a girl like it's not just a fit right. I'm like, did you realize you've got it on backwards, right? She's like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, flip around, scrunch goes down the butt crack, <laughs> not at the front crack. <laughs> so if you take anything from this podcast, the scrunch goes scrunch down the, the butt crack. crack. Yeah. <laughs> just like, hey, it's gonna be uncomfortable, like. I would just feel like there would be uh, breezy. Yeah. 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 It's just, yeah. Breezy in the wrong place. But I think what happens is that for a lot of these suits, like the suits are bigger in the front than they're in the back. Yeah. And some girls like pull it like down too far yeah. in the front, too high in the back. Yeah. yeah. Just got to find the right fit. <laughs> yeah. So, well, scrunch goes in the back, connectors go up here, that's down here. And I would just say that if you don't have a coach with you on your show day to make sure that you film yourself in your room, in your suit, and even send it to someone, anyone, a mom, your best friend. Hey, does this look okay? Is everything in? Do you see anything? Because sometimes we're just go, 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 go. We're so used to seeing ourselves in the suit that we don't see things that other people see. So if you're alone, send it to someone, get that cross check, and then you know, okay, everything's in and looks good. And that, you know, and a lot of times you just don't have that eye, right? You know what I mean? Like, a great example is I talk about how I cut my hair at Japan because I was backstage, filmed myself. I was like, oh, my hair is too long. So I cut my hair while I was backstage. But a normal person is not probably going to see that. They're yeah. probably focusing on their glutes and their tie-ins. And it's like whatever they're focusing on, they're not going to notice their hair is too long. Yeah, so maybe we should talk about that. So when Sean's saying the hair is too long, so like when you're in that back pose, you should see couple inches of your lower back yeah. because that allows the judges to see your, your waistline. So yeah. where girls get into trouble is when they have really long hair because the girls don't want to cut their hair. And I get it. If I had that long of hair naturally too, I wouldn't want to cut it. But when it sits on their glutes, right? So that it covers up like your upper outer glutes. So if you have really long hair and you want to compete, you got to cut it so it's just above that low back line. So you see a little bit of that waist. Not that you have to cut your hair off completely. Um, also, if you have like really thick hair and like wide hair, you won't almost maybe want to cut it to a V. That way you see your rear delts when you're in that back right. pose. Because if your hair is really big and full, it might cover your shoulders. And that's not a good look in the back pose. So you want to see some like, shame. Like, you have to remember, it's all the king's balance. Yeah. So it's always about up, upper to lower. Too. Yeah. So you need to be able to sit the fullness of the delts to match the fullness of the glutes. Yeah. So like for me, when I cut my hair, my hair was just sitting right on the top of my glutes. Couldn't see, you know, couldn't see my bikini line. Yeah. So I just put my hair right above the bikini line so you can see a little bit of skin between my hair and that top of the bikini. Yeah. And then that pulls in that that lower back and makes you look like you've got that that bikini into your waistline. You have that there and you have your hair covering it. And it kind of completely ruins that line. Yeah, absolutely. So, I always carry with me in my, um, my checked bag, a little, little tiny pair of like a uh, grooming scissors, yes. just in case something like that happens. Um, plus it's just nice. Like when you're cutting like your packages open with your foods and stuff like that, it's just nice to have that little pair of scissors. So yeah. if you can, that's a definitely a good one to have in your show day Yeah, bag essentials. I, what was it? Charlotte? I cut Anya's hair with eyelash scissors. Okay. When you got to do it, you got to do it. It's like, it work. Just figure it out. It works. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, most of the front desks have them if you absolutely need it, but that's what we're talking about when most of these things should be looked at beforehand, but 
if, if that happens, that's what they're talking about. And again, like you said, send the video off to somebody that, that at least knows somewhat what they're looking at. Yeah. You know, make sure that you're not showing things you shouldn't be showing. Yeah. That that's happened before when we see girls showing too much to the back. Oh, I'll get this stuff. So makeup looks off. Yeah. I there's been so many times I've gone back to, to the room with Jamie and Jamie's like, I just don't like that lipstick. It looks it's like when you get on stage, it's gonna be like flush to you. And man, she's right. Like she's got that eye now I do too. So like a little bit of a darker lip so that really comes out on stage. I don't know. There's just so many things that we know to look at, which is why we're in person most yeah. of the time. Yeah. No, I had one of my girls, she, she's, she's a petite girl, really small. And she went, she was at a show, I wasn't there, so many pictures of the makeup. And she wanted a golden eye. Well, they made her eyes gold. And like gold, gold. What and do you think <laughs> about that? It was bad. It was very bad. I, I say no gold, no silver. I like gold to an extent. It needs to be like, it needs to be brushed in with like a, like a, a brown smoky eye. Okay. Okay, mm-hmm. so, but hers was like big bird gold. Like, it was not good. Big bird. <laughs> it, was bad. it was very bad. And these big, huge, fluffy eyelashes, too. And she sent it to me, and I was like, can you go back and have them not, not do that? <laughs> I was like, can, can you go back and have them fix that? She's like, yeah, I, I wasn't, she's like, I'm glad you said that, because I wasn't sure about it. I was like, I know you told me to do, like, a gold smoky eye. I was like, she's like, but this, I was like, no, that's, that's, that's like, big that's a gold eye. That's yeah. not a smoky eye. That's not a golden eye. eye. That's, that's a big gold eye. eye. So she went, got her, her makeup fixed. They fixed it for her, and it looked a thousand times better. And again, I mentioned she's a teen, because these, these lashes were so big. Like, again, look like Big Bird, like, stuff loveliness. Like, they were she's just, gonna fly away. Yeah, they were terrible. So they went and turned down the lashes. They went and, and brought down the, the gold and the gold knife and um and she looked at how it was she had to play her pro card actually so yeah <laughs> so was thank god you didn't stick with the big bird look yeah, big bird was not good yeah and those things actually make you age you as well it made her look older because she had so much makeup on yeah a so, bad makeup job can yeah bad this is actually something that debbie was talking about it pro too she's not a fan of like the, the overdone like a lot of color on the eyes and all this kind of stuff too you know, you want your makeup to accentuate you yeah, and not be something that you're like, oh, her makeup, look at that so bright gold. Well, no, no, no. We want it to look like you. Right. If they're looking at your, the makeup, they're not looking at the physique. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It's got to be was, a... To be fair, there was a lot of really bad makeup. I've, I've mentioned that, uh, I think, in my live when I was wrapping up the show. Also, during my Spotify when I was there, there was a lot of bad makeup. I've been seeing a lot of bad makeup so far this season, actually. Yeah. A lot of matchy matchy, like a lot of like the eyes that you would see kind of yeah, thing. a lot of a lot of red lips, a lot of white faces. Yeah. Like I don't like the red lips. I feel like and I and I hate to say this, but I feel like a lot of it is a is a wellness influence. Yeah, because they can get away with that. I don't know why. Yeah. But, but they look yeah, well even they don't. <laughs> like, but because they come out like, you know, in with those more eccentric suits, right? Come out with more eccentric clothes, right? Come out with more eccentric makeup, then it then it kind of trickles down. Well, that's where the touching in the back post started too with wellness. And then the bikini girl yeah. started doing it. And then Sandy was like, no, yeah, yeah you're right. It does yeah. trickle down. It trickles down. down. Yeah. So and I and I even get that with suits, like girls that are in bikini are like, I love this wellness. I think that's wellness. They can do ombres. They can do stuff like that. That's a little bit more out of box. Yeah. Can't not, do that. Not, not in bikini. No. Can't do it in bikini. No. So it's always, you want to be more subtle. It's the bikini girl supposed to be the girl next door. You know, like everything that you do it should be accentuate your overall look and nothing should stick out. Compliment to you. Yeah. Yeah. You want to be glammed, but a compliment to you, not yeah. so far off of you and who you are that it, it, you know, and again, too, this goes back to your confidence as well. Like, I don't know about you, but like, if I come out in a glam, that's like too much, I don't feel confident. It's not me. You know, I walk around like this 24 seven. So it's like, if it's too much, I almost feel a little bit more self-conscious. And again, going back to, it makes you look older. Yeah. When people don't realize, again, I work with a lot of master's girls. You're starting to work with master's girls more too. The more makeup you pile on their face, the older they look. Yeah, makeup's huge for the bastards division. Yeah. You're absolutely right. You're so absolutely you gotta right. be careful with that stuff. It needs to be a little bit lighter. It's a little bit more fresh. Yeah. And nothing too crazy, nothing too over the top, because it just, again, it just makes you look older and harder. And again, for those of us that are master's age, like myself, we tend to be a little bit harder anyway. So it tends to go a little bit more drag queen. And it's just yeah. not, not cute. Not a, good, not a good look. Yeah. 
Well, and I, and I, you know, you do your own makeup, but you're a professional, but you know, I tell, I tell my athletes and myself too, like you work so darn hard for this day, like go splurge on yourself and get your makeup professionally done. And stage makeup is not like a typical makeup. And it takes someone like Sean that understands skin textures and colors and the look of stage and the lights to really nail that look when you get under the lights. And I've been with some horrible makeup artists that did not understand stage makeup. And now I'm with some really great makeup artists and it's, it, it, it is a very special person. And most of the time, if you're going to do your own makeup, it's not going to be as dark or as bold as it needs to be right. to be on stage. Right. And I know for a lot of first time amateurs too, they'll get their makeup done for the first time and they'll text me like, Oh my God, I look like a clown. And I'm like, you do when you're not under the lights, when you're under the lights, you look perfect. And it it should feel that way if you feel that way after you get your first uh, competition makeup day. Don't freak. It's probably okay. (laughs) And at the end of the day, I tell people too, like what you should be able to do is after the show, you should be able to rinse off your tan, keep your face on, go out, feel comfortable. I always do that. Yeah. I always do that. My makeup looks great and it matches. And yeah, 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 that's a good uh, point. Yeah. So that was a really random tangent. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. The backwards suit. Yeah. Then we went on the tangent. Well, you know, just giving all the information, yeah, like right. always. So, know how long this one has been? One ten. Yeah, yeah we, we made it. Yeah, we're not already. <laughs> no. we, can't, we can't see the screen. No, we can't. We're like literally in. The, we're supposed to sweating. You know, just going across the sky, like I'm getting I'm chasing the sun. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we do when we're not in our typical, you know, spots. Got us live and in person. That's so it. That's, that's it. it. That's it. Anything else that you wanted to wrap up for today? We have semi long weekends. Give me one. I don't think so, Sean. I need to go get some sleep. I'm being honest. No, I need to go train. I haven't trained yet, so I need to go do that. And I got to go fight the traffic to get back home. I know. I fought the traffic to come to you today. to an hour. <laughs> so tomorrow I'll be here. I'll be settled. Yes. Yeah, Sunday will be good to go. But yeah. we, need, we always know that if we don't do these things ahead of time, it's just we're going to get to get home. And we'll be like, no, we're not going to do this. By the time we wake up tomorrow morning, it's... Yeah, totally. So I'm glad that we were able to start the weekend with each other. Yeah, yeah. I know, right? So, so cute. Spear <laughs> fingers, so like whatever. I don't even know if that came with from. the drags, do yes, the drag queens. <laughs> yeah, but is, is that what that's what they do? Yeah, to okay. clap. Oh, uh, like, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm a RuPaul fanatic now, oh. so sorry. Okay, yeah. When? Well, in, in, in Japan, we did this. I don't know what that means, but that's Yeah, you said that they were always doing yeah. that. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Hopefully it's a good sign. It's a good sign because we're doing it on stage. So I don't think we're flipping into reality. Okay. Like that, so I think it's a good thing. <laughs> I'm ready for when I compete there. I know, right? You're teaching me all the way. Whatever it is. Got it. Yes. Um, yeah. So with that, we're going to sign out. Um, thank you guys for joining us again. As always, like, comment, subscribe, all the fun things, wherever the buttons are for you. I don't know if they're up and down and around. So true. And um, we'll be back again next week for episode number 42. But this is episode number 41, Behind the Bikini signing out hi guys bye let's hope that worked